So, behind me you can see uh, my observatory that I've built here in my garden in Wiltshire. Um, but typically most people, if they're doing solar observing, will just use a standard mount setup and, and bring it out into the sunshine. Um, setting up the mount for daytime solar observing is exactly the same as you would for nighttime observing. You do have to polar align the mount, and obviously that's a bit more tricky in the daytime because you don't have Polaris as a reference point. Um, typically what most people will do is maybe place marking points on the ground where the mount is uh, aligned to north, or you could use a compass just to set a rough north. Um, close to north is okay. Uh, for most solar observing. The mount uh, pointing up towards the north and then obviously you've got the sun um, going over, tracking over the southern part of the sky. Um, depending on the time of year obviously, um, higher up in the summer uh, can make it easy to observe the sun but also you have to take into account thermal considerations, especially if you're in um, a more urban environment where you've got a lot of concrete around, uh, you can get a lot of heat coming off the ground. Uh, this can, as it does with day, uh, evening observing, uh, affect the image and seeing is a factor with both daytime and uh, nighttime observing. Seeing can be more critical um, observing the sun, uh, obviously because you've got a lot of heat being created during the day. So most solar observers tend to observe either early in the morning or the imaging um, teams um, that I've worked with in particular uh, tend to observe an image uh, early in the morning or late in the afternoon. Um, ideally over water if you're near to a river or a lake or the seaside um, or over grass or hills if you're hopefully lucky enough to be in the countryside. But anywhere is okay uh, in, in reality. So we've got the telescope mount here. This is a Skywatcher NEQ3 mount uh, aligned to north. Um, we've also got it at the correct um, angle, latitude angle, obviously. Um, we're at 51 degrees here. Um, it's also very important to correctly balance your telescopes um, as you do in the evening, um, because you obviously don't want to do any uh, damage to the gearing system of, of the mount itself, especially if it's a tracking mount. Tracking mounts are ideal uh, for long-term obs observation or imaging where you're not having to reposition. But if you just have a standard tripod uh, and something like a Coronado PST, which does have a tripod thread um, built into uh, the base of it, as does the solar scope here, um, you can use that for casual observing of the sun and making notes and sketches if you're happy just to reposition it at any point. Uh, the mount we're using here, as I said, is an NEQ3. Um, it's slight overkill for this purpose because it has full go-to capability and the ability to point to millions uh, of different objects, hundreds of thousands of stars, galaxies, etc. in the sky from its own uh, catalogue and database. Uh, but any tracking mount will be fine. Um, it just needs to track basically in right ascension um, to follow the sun throughout the day. So finding the sun, you may think, is quite easy. It's a large object in the sky. But in reality it isn't, and you do have to use specialist solar finders um, really to assist you with finding the sun. What we have on the solar scope here, the SolarView 50, is a Teleview Soul Searcher. Um, this is a small add-on which comes included with the telescope. Uh, these can be purchased either separately if you don't have one already, and there's various other companies like Astro Engineering who also make solar finders. What we have is effectively a pinhole at the front uh, and a small white disc at the back. Now, the pinhole acts as a pinhole type camera. Um, effectively, when you move uh, the telescope about, you'll gradually begin to see more and more of a shadow where the shadow is being cast here. And you can see just in here uh, a whiter image, which is the sun. What we're trying to do is maneuver the telescope until that white image of the sun is exactly over the white disc, as you can see here. Now we can be reasonably happy and uh, confident that we have the sun in the field of view for either the camera or your eyepiece.